Sometimes. Sometimes. Letting it out can make a big difference. Oh yes. And sometimes you gotta let your heart speak. You gotta let your heart speak. You gotta let it out. No matter what you're going through. Yeah. I know how you feel. I know it's hard to reveal. But let your heart speak. Six they say we just chosen. Sometimes it's difficult to draw the line between friends and lovers. When we are caught in this gray area, we find ourselves in a limbo, especially if we feel like we want to move the relationship up to the next level. There's really very little with which to start with. And not a lot of people get out of this unhurt. Hi, I'm Joe Domingo. Welcome to another episode of Love Notes. Dear Joe, just call me Rizel. For years, I believed in the value of chastity and that one's virginity is the important gift a bride could give her husband. I had many relationships before, but I never gave all of myself until I met Nick. In the four years that Nick and I were living in a shared accommodation, we have nothing but just fraternal concern for each other. One night, we both got drunk, Joe, and realized there was some kind of unspoken attraction between us, and we got carried away. We started kissing passionately. Joe, I felt very awkward because he began to avoid me after that. And since I hate loose ends and wanted to settle the score, I wrote a note saying that I care for him. But if he thinks we're not good for each other, we can just forget about what happened and remain friends. Joe, Nick left our dorm, and I never heard from him since then. I am bisexual. I fall for both guys and girls, but more from an emotional than a physical perspective. I date a lot of guys and girls and would occasionally enter into a non-committal relationship, most of which I would later regret and would soon end when I find the other party falling for me. And Joe, please don't get me wrong. I'm not the woman of the world type. Deep within me, I'm still somewhat conservative, but flirtatiously playful at times. Joe, I also wish to be in a serious relationship, especially after my hurtful experience with my first girlfriend, whom I have loved more than myself, and my first boyfriend, who is marrying soon. I can't exactly figure out how it started again, but after Nick came back and moved in at the dorm, we started to spend more and more time together until one night we went beyond ourselves and crossed the line that I thought I never would. Though it is not as half as wonderful as I expected it to be, the problem, Joe, is I don't know if it has any meaning for Nick. We did not even have a relationship in the first place. And never even once did he tell me that he cares for me, much more that he loves me. I do know he was not an easy guy. He would have not done that with me had he not liked me somehow. I'm aware that some girls have tried to win him, but maybe they did not succeed and went as far as I did. But I know for a fact too that these girls probably are very vocal about commitment when I am not. Maybe that settles it. Or maybe it's because having each other is somewhat beneficial. We almost live in the same house, go to the same school, belong to the same organization. We were always together. So we decided to make the best use of it, Joe. Or maybe like me, he just wanted uncommitted friendship with some benefits on the side. Joe, I don't know what's going on in his mind. All I know is that I have deeply fallen in love with Nick. 
How else will I explain everything I have given up for him? The pride I swallow every time I make the first move to get close to him? And the little errands I do for him? And when he asks me why, I just get tongue-tied about my true feelings. Lately, I've been struggling if I should reveal my true feelings. I'm afraid that if I tell him how much I love him, he would reject me and tell me we are just better off as friends. I don't think I would be ready for that. I am ready to commit myself now, Joe. But how can I tell him if I don't even know what he feels for me? Besides, no matter how much I love him, and no matter how I hope and wish that he's the one for me, I have this feeling that we are not made for each other. I know I'm not his type. He may be sweet in his little ways, but I'm always the one who makes the first move. Joe, I might have penetrated what seems to be a barrier he created with most people, but it's still not enough to make me feel special. If he finds a girl he really wants, what will become of me? I will be left alone again, grieving over my hurt emotions. I am now living in a separate dorm to distance myself from Nick and to think things over. Joe, every time I go to school, the temptation to see him is just too great. I can't resist it and it's killing me. He has made no attempt to communicate or even say hi or hello to me, despite my efforts to reach out to him. Someone told me that he's not the type of guy who would court a girl and express his feelings. But I went against many of my self-imposed rules for him, Joe. So why can't he let me know where I stand? What am I supposed to do now? It has been ages since I fell in love. And I don't want to lose this feeling again. This is my reality now. I don't pay attention to any other man or woman I meet. And I feel I have become a better person because of him. Please help me, Joe. Desperately seeking your advice. Rizal. Rizal, there are a lot of reasons why Nick could be hiding his feelings from you. It's true that he could have not gone beyond his limits without having liked you at least. But liking is far different from loving and caring for someone. There are a lot of men who wrap themselves with a seemingly impenetrable barrier, and it's not always because they are strong, but because they have their own weaknesses to hide and to protect. Nick is indeed not an easy guy. He wants to be in control, so he keeps his feelings to himself. And for now, it seems that he's probably not ready for any kind of commitment yet. Rizal, I believe communication is important in any relationship. Unless we can openly express our feelings, our doubts or fears, joys and sadness to someone, then we cannot truly grow in a relationship. You will never know what's going on in Nick's mind until you find time to sit down with him and talk about your feelings. Rizal, you never asked for any commitment before you gave yourself in to Nick. But I believe you deserve to know at least what it all meant to him. You are now making your own conclusions from a relationship that was never clearly defined right from the beginning. Rizal, I know that Nick is a sensible man. He just probably doesn't know how to go about dealing with his own feelings when they get too strong. This is the time, at least, in what Nick considers friendship, that you really need to talk seriously. It may be difficult to find the right match to start the conversation, but at least you have to try. You have spent quite a long time with him, and I know you know him better than others. You know about the right timing on when to sit down and talk with him. Rizal, I know that you want more from this relationship than what he could probably offer you. Your physical closeness may have meant something to him, but it could also be just a passionate moment, driven not by love,
but by just the desire to express what he has kept locked inside himself. There is only one way to know. As two sensible and mature individuals, talk about your relationship. Tell him what you feel for him, but do not oblige him or impose anything on him. Then listen not only to what he says, but more importantly to what he doesn't say. I'm confident that you'll find out where you really stand and make a choice from there. I personally believe, like how Rizal put it in the beginning, the importance of abstaining from any sexual relationship outside marriage. And not because everyone is doing it means it's the right thing to do. And women, giving all your self to a man is not even a guarantee that you can keep him. Let us always remember that real love brings out the best in us. It's the kind of love that makes us want to do good and be good. It's the kind of love that is worth fighting for. Rizal, this could be a long shot, but I know you wouldn't want to miss this feeling again. And there's only one way to find out. Give it your best try and pray to God to open or close the doors necessary to let you know if this relationship is meant to be. I know you're not afraid to get into any commitment, especially with Nick, but this will only work if he is willing to make the same effort to put the same amount of commitment that you have for him. Rizal, be thankful that for once in your life, you have felt right about a person and that feeling stayed in your heart and brought out the best in you. You may never get it right the first time, but it doesn't mean that we will never be given a chance to make it right and to do what is right. Most of us don't end up with our first love. And I hope that whatever we have gone through to be where we are right now have taught us the importance of putting our relationship with God first more than anyone else. God always has an appointed time for every event of our life. And only when we put our complete trust in Him can we rest in knowing that everything that is meant for us will all fall into its proper place, its perfect place, in God's perfect time, according to His perfect will. God bless you, Rizal, and I wish you all the best. Hanggang sa susunod na linggo pong muli, ako si Joe Mango. We'll see you again next week for another episode of Love Notes.